All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I apologize for the gap in my streaming. So, um, <clears throat> obviously, I've been gone for like a month. And the reason why is a number of things. So, first, I had a really bad migraine. I, I get them from time to time. Usually, it lasts a few days. This one lasted just about two weeks. I think it was about a week and a half. Um, and just before I started feeling better from that, I busted my ankle. Uh, no idea how. I, I think it's some kind of inflammation, but um, it made it almost impossible to move, to, to even stand, uh, let alone just move my foot. Um, I had to have it wrapped and, and, and splinted all the time. Uh, I couldn't really get out of bed much. Um, then it moved into my toe. Then I had some really bad food poisoning for a few days. Um, and just now I'm starting to get back to a point where I'm physically capable and I'm not going to be, you know, yelping in pain as we roll down the runway because I have to use my foot. Um, or, you know, getting frustrated at a Mega Man boss kicking the side of my computer and then, you know, screaming in your ear. That's not something I want to do. It's not something I'm going to do. And today I'm 100% sure that's not going to happen. So we're going to get back into X-Plane today. We're going to, so just before I took my vacation, um, we flew from Copenhagen to Trondheim. And the plane just decided it didn't want to fly anymore when we got to the destination. Now, um, I've kind of figured out what's going on there. And I'll get to that later. Um, we'll, I'll be able to confirm it the next time I fly an MFS. Uh, but if I'm correct, that'll actually be a common occurrence. What it's doing every time I land, it's going to do that. Um... What we're going to do today is we're going to refly that flight in X-Plane 11 and show how an actual simulator runs that sort of a scenario. Uh, because as you'll find, I don't crash when I'm flying an X-Plane because it doesn't suddenly decide it doesn't want to fly. Um... There we go. Okay, I didn't want that uh, frame rate counter still up there all the time. Yeah, it is a bit funny. And I think I know what's causing it. Um, I think it's on approach. For some reason, it gets low and it stops using the auto throttle. Uh, so the auto throttle just spools all the way back to nothing. But since the auto throttle selector is still on, um, and, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't spool all the way back. But it spools it all the way back to idle and 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 it should stop short of that. And when you throttle a airliner's engines all the way back to full idle, it takes them about six to ten seconds to spool up at all. And even that will only happen if I turn off auto throttle. Now in the actual plane, if I advance the throttle to full, it should disconnect the auto throttle. But it didn't. So, um, so in this case, I, uh, what I should have to do is manually deselect the auto throttle. And once I do that, I should be able to spool the engines back up and recover before I crash. However, we're sitting here in Copenhagen. It's almost dawn and we have a flight to do. And I totally forgot to get my checklist up on screen, but I'm going to do that real quick. It doesn't take me but a second. M move. Thank you. All right. Now let's get to our flight. All right. Preliminary, preliminary pre-flight procedures. Let's get our batteries on. Now, I can't actually see here. Somewhere like here. There we go. Battery one and two on. 
Then we'll get our ground control recorder going. Uh, external power online. Fuel pumps should all be off. Fuel can be loaded. All right, so let's go to our Tolus menu. We remember how this is. It's a little less um, pretty than Microsoft Flight, but it's a hell of a lot more reliable. So we need 7,155. So let's go with 7,200 kilograms of block fuel. And we're going to load... 135 passengers. Um, and our zero fuel weight should be 56.3. Let's take down. There we go. 56.3. Quick refuel and apply these load settings. All right. So that is us loaded. APU fire test. Actually, let's real quick pop these up. And then... Perfect. That's exactly what it should do. Close. Thank you. Um... All right, so APU master on. Then we're going to wait for the flap open message while we configure the lights in the cockpit. APU fire test sounds like something a flamethrower user would say. I mean, a fire test, definitely. The head shake is really annoying. Okay, flap open. APU start. Let's go ahead and get our IRS aligning. Um, cockpit lights, flap lever should be retracted. Slats should be retracted. Speed brakes retracted. Probe and window heat is not needed. APU bleed can come on as soon as it's available. Alright, let's go down this side. It's IRS is aligning. Flight controls not needed. Okay, I don't need to worry about the GPWS here on the ground. Recorders are going... All right, uh, crew supply oxygen is off and it should be. All right. Let's go ahead and fire test our engines. I could look at the screen. The screen is going to show all the right things because it's supposed to. All right, let's turn on the APU bleed. All right, air conditioning panel, no white. Air conditioning temp, uh, cross bleeds should be set to auto. Air conditioning temps are good. Uh, external power can come off now. Should look at fault lights on generator one and two. All other electrical lights extinguished. Ventilation system is all extinguished. And now we can go to our preliminary pre-flight or our pre-flight procedures. Pardon me. We've already completed our adheres, uh, which is currently all aligning. Going to take about seven minutes. Strobe lights can come to auto. Wing lights on. Nav and logo. We're going to use system one today. Uh, seat belts can come on. No smoking to auto and emergency exit lights armed. Landing elevation should be set to automatic. Pack flow as required, which it looks like we're going to need normal. Uh, fuel pumps can all come on. Mm. 
Moving on down the line, this all looks good. Anti-ice is not needed. Probe window heat not needed. Pressurization is all good. External lights are good for now. Uh, interior lights are good for now. Uh, and there's cabin lights and emergency lights. We're good. Now we can start turning on our radios. Look at our cutouts here. All looks good. Cargo is taken care of. Ventilation is still extinguished. Manual starts aren't required today, so now we're going to go ahead and go down to the panel. Let's turn this up a bit. So let's turn on our main radios. Let's check everything down here. Make sure that engines are in the off position. Igniters are not on. Rudder trim is zero. Park brake is set. Let's go ahead and work on our McDo. So here we're going to go to init on our first one and data on our second. We're going to look at our GPS position monitor. So we are traveling from EKCH to NVA. Flight number is going to be AT... Um, Let's go with 0316, because that's the damn date. All right, latitude 5537.1. Longitude 1239.9. And a line. All right, our cost index today is going to be 31. Cruise flight level is going to be 380. Grab our climb winds and head over to flight plan. All right, so we're going to be departing EKCH uh, via 04 left with the Veda 2 Echo departure. With no transition. And then from Vedar, we're going to go to Airways. We're gonna fly via Lima 997. To Lasley. Then we're going to direct Zenta and Vevod. Then from Vevod, we're going to jump on our arrival. I'm just start staring at my really stupid armed parent peasants. In Stronghold 2, and I gotta say, they're very weak and stupid. I mean, AI is hard to program. And they can't be smarter than the people that program them, right? Alright, so we're coming in through Viva 1 Lima. And we shouldn't be a via... no. With no transition. And that should get us no discounts. Now let's take a look at this in plan mode. Leslie Zenta Rook. Uh, Okay, this is a very strange approach, but it's not a problem, so we're going to go with it. Perfect. All right, let's go back to arc mode. You're not needed anymore. Um, 
Secondary flight plan I'm not going to worry about because we already know what our departure is and we are not online, so they're not going to throw us any loops. Um, so now we need to do init B, for which we need our Tolis plugin again. All right, our zero fuel weight is going to be 56.3, and our center of gravity is going to be 29.0. Block fuel is going to be 77.1. Eh, let's go 7.2. So we're at 71.8. Perfect. Speaking of perf, now we're on to performance. Let's take a flaps 1 departure. And V1 is going to be 141. V rotate is 141. And V2 is 143. Flaps are going to be 1 slash up 0, 0.0. Or down. It doesn't really matter. It's 0. Uh, and the flux temp is going to be 66. And then we'll go to progress to ENVA. And then I'm going to set you to flight plan. All right, so that's that configured. I'm going to real quick look at what the shortcuts are because uh, I definitely hit one and four flaps up a notch. What's four? Speed brakes extend one. Okay. I need to check flaps and speed brakes. Both are good. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's our pre-flight procedures completed. Let's worry about our uh, pushback and start procedures. All right, our METAR says we have QNH is 1020. All right, flight directors, both on. Speed should be managed or dashed. Heading is dashed. Altitude, we're going to set to 38,000 feet. Um, Anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder, we're going to set to 1,200 And we're going to turn it on. All right. Engine start procedures. Let's take a look at our map. I want to see what our uh, taxi is going to look like today. Come on. Where are you? Okay, this is definitely having issues. Okay, where are we at? this taxi map they said they mentioned something about a taxi map flight tools do we have a taxi map there we do not live sim data this live map is not very good now so I can't really use it anymore. Ah, this is this is what I have to deal with now.
Okay, I'm gonna taxi. Standard taxi routes for zero four left. Okay, so we're going to be heading to Alpha, which means we are we are way in the wrong place. Okay. <laughs> um. However, it does look like we can start up for a straight out. All right, so engine mode can come to ignition, engine two, master on. Ow. And we're gonna look for about 19% N2 or N1 rotation. Go ahead and start this now that we've introduced fuel. Oh, that sound, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's a positive start. Engine two, let's start engine one. We're going to look for, again, about 19% and one rotation. Speed brake. Motherfucker. You weren't ro retracted, were you? Alright, that's a positive start. Engine 2. Engine mode can come back to normal. If you bleed can come off. Round spoilers armed. Flap set position one. Pitch trim set for takeoff. Let's double check what our pitch trim is. Zero percent. Or zero degrees. Perfect. Uh, engine and wing anti-ice is not required. APU master off. All right, we are ready to taxi. So taxi lights can come on. So I'm gonna need to take a right, cross runway two two left. Take another left. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Okay, um, park brake off. know why we are where we are it doesn't make sense but this is where we are and that's what we're gonna deal with Alright, so let's go ahead and while we're taxiing, we have a little thing to get used to. Thank you for choosing to 
fly a rat pack this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first 3 minutes and the last 8 minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seat belt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now, just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-off. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline, and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why have an airline put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know, maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being bland. Same goes for spilled fruit, coffee, and teapots, and cups of lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. 
Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study. So you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. All right, and that was our first briefing. Let's go with briefing with safety briefing number two today. This is your captain speaking with safety briefing number four. If the child next to you, yours or not, starts crying really loud on the plane, have the flight attendant come up to the cockpit and let me know. I'll simulate a loss of pressure so the mask can come down and you can helpfully strangle the child until he's quiet. I just want to point out, I, 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 I want to make it very, very clear, we here at Iraq Attack do not condone child violence. However, like Team Four Star, we do find the idea of it very hilarious. All right, so we are just about ready to get the hell out of here. This is one of the longest taxis I've done in a while. And to make things worse, my uh, charts aren't working properly today. Uh, I wish I hadn't updated my um, SIM toolkit, but hey, as long as I can get there, it's fine. I'm just reading a standard taxi chart now, which is fine. I know how to. I just don't like to, and it can be a little disorienting, particularly at night. This is things that actual pilots sometimes screw up. Taxiing is one of the hardest times on pilots. And it looks like we're going to get a nice, pretty dawn takeoff. I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited for that. And the funny thing is, this is all idling, right? If I come to a complete stop and I idle... I can release all the brakes and this thing won't move. But once I break that moment of inertia, I'm able to, we're already up to 22, uh, 22 knots. Which is roughly like 23, 24 miles per hour. Just off of idling. That's because mostly all we're really fighting against is drag. Now, I don't really need to do this, but I'm about to do this the weird way. So we're going to take this taxiway off here to the right. And really it's just a loop around to make less sharp turns. That's all it is. 
so that we don't have to make a 90, uh, two quick 90 degrees when we get to the end of the runway. Then we have another, we're gonna pass the first, there's our first, these are, these are technically de-icing pads. That's one of the reasons for it. But it also allows us to make these nice, shallow turns. Here we are, runway zero four left. All right, so let's do our checklist here. Auto brakes max. Um, let me actually get lined up on the runway. That's a thirteen minute taxi. FMA is nav and climb. make our calls all right ecam takeoff config check come on hit the button no blue transponder set to tara Engine mode is on normal. Runway turn off lights can come on. Wing lights, or, or takeoff lights, landing lights, uh, takeoff. We should be good to go. Okay. Let's stop this. Our taxi is over. So we're going to hit our chrono throttles to 50% and one rotation. Stabilized, flex, forward pressure on the nose. Slowly release it, 80 knots, 100 knots. Thirty V one rotate positive rate gear up Climb power set. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the autopilot. That way we can turn off our nose light and our runway turn off lights. Ground spoiler can be disarmed. Uh, flaps can be retracted once we get to our safe speed, 200 knots.
something, something sounds off. Where's my audio sound out of this? Okay, not sure what's going on. But I do hear weird sounds coming from my speakers. Let's turn that down a bit. Hopefully that sounds better for you guys. You're going to have to let me know how that is for you guys. Alright, engine mode is normal. Uh, we can retract our flaps. Q&H set standard. Standard barrel set. Alright. Landing lights can come off 10,000 feet and not a moment before. FCU, throttle climb, climb, alt, blue, nav. We're looking good so far. Landing lights are still on, seat belts are still on. I'm going to keep seat belts on until 10,000. So we are, we are getting very close. We're about 1,000 feet away. And we're climbing like a bat out of hell. Uh, <laughs> 3,300 feet per minute. Um, that's one thing I do like about Airbus. They, they, they descend very slowly. They ascend pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, not as fast as Boeing. What I w what I do wish I had, and I had, I wish I had the money to do, is I wish I could fly the uh, the CRJ7 that came out today. Unfortunately, that's just not something that's in my budget. <laughs> I don't have the ability to afford a new uh, aircraft right now. Make sure that door is locked. Okay, we're over 10,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these landing lights. And I'm going to turn off the seat belt light since we're straightening out after this bank. And that's us. We should be good until uh, cruise. Pretty much, anyway. Uh, standard barrel set. Um, cruise altitude has been set. We're all good. Uh, so now we just need to monitor the FCU and the FMA. Uh, lower ECAM can be set to status monitor. And we don't have a step altitude today. We're not, we're not doing a step one. I'm going to turn down my volume just a little bit. I don't like to peg red line. Which I have been doing lately. But to be fair, what I probably should be doing is removing some of my filters that are increasing my audio. sounds pretty good. It uh, looks pretty good anyway on my uh, audio monitor. You guys will have to be the ones to let me know actually how it's doing. If I actually sound better or if it just looks better on the computer. So let me know what you guys think. I did just change the audio. I removed all of my audio filters, all of my game filters. All I've got now is the noise game. 
I probably should have other things, but I'm not really familiar with what these filters do. Um, like, I'm sure I probably should have noise suppression or a limiter, but um, I don't know exactly what these things do, and I need to look into them. I, I do need to, to look into these things and, and learn how to do what I'm doing. Audio engineering is something I really have not done with my stream, um, and it'd probably be beneficial for me to do it. One more out of the way. Ah, shit. We forgot to play for you the briefing. So I'm just going to read it now for your viewing enjoyment. Ah, fuck it. Spectacles, testicles, wallet, to watch. If the plane starts to fall, stick your head in your crotch. I was just adjusting my light a little bit there. Um, I was worried about it falling off my, uh, my, uh, what are they called? Uh, file cabinet. I'm gonna, yes, I have a file cabinet. In it, I have most of my, <coughs> pardon me. In it, I have most of my old flight plans and charts from when I was operating on, uh, on paper charts and printing everything off. Thankfully, I haven't had to do that in a while. Uh, Sim Toolkit Pro has been great for that, as has uh, in the United States, I use AirNav. Uh, it doesn't give me current charts, but it gets me close enough, especially since I don't have an Avograph subscription. If I did, I absolutely Navigraph is an amazing, amazing tool. Um, so, I need to talk a little bit about YouTube, right? So, I think, I think, we're just about caught up on uh, light sim videos on YouTube. You might have like one more. Uh, and unfortunately what that means is that I don't have a buffer. If I have to take another Tuesday off, I lose my buffer entirely. Uh, and then if I miss another, I'm going to miss a Friday release on YouTube because there's not going to be a video to release. It also means that I have to do processing less in batches, which is very easy for me, uh, and more as it's done. Um, at this point, I can't batch process more than, you know, a week's videos because I don't have a backlog to keep running, right? So what I had been doing is I would basically record a month's worth of videos and then process all of those videos for the month at once. Like, understanding that that's roughly 12 videos a month, right? So being able to do them all at once and then just batch process them all in one night. So I just leave my computer on over a night or two and it processes everything very, very easy. But uh, now I'm gonna have to be doing that every week. Um, that's only three videos at a time that I can process, which means much, much less utilization of overnight time. Um, and that's an issue for me. Um, because I do have to be able to access my computer and my hardware acceleration during the day. So if I'm, so I basically only have overnight and over weekend. So if I'm having to process a video 
between Tuesday when I fly and Thursday night when I have to queue it for release. I don't have a weekend day to process that video and the overnight gets wasted to a degree um, and that doesn't work out well for me. So I'm going to have to find a way to squeeze in some extra flight time. Now we might do that by splitting up our flights a little bit and instead of doing two hours in one flight, we'll do three hours in two flights, we'll do two short hops. Um, so we'll spend less time in cruise, more time on takeoff and, and landing. Uh, I may not do full cold and dark startups when I do that, um, at least for the second one, because otherwise you're talking about another half hour to set up the plane again. There's not a lot of point to that, right? Or what I may do is switch a day that I'm currently doing Mega Man to a flight sim day temporarily so that I can get some extra footage and get a backlog, you know, queued up again, where I can do at least a month of videos at once. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to know what you guys think about that, what you would prefer as far as uh, whether you would rather see me do more broken up streams that are shorter uh, well, pardon me, the, the more broken up streams where the flights are shorter but the stream is longer. Or whether you'd like me like to see me do an extra two hour stream somewhere else. Whether that and that may take the form of doing a four hour stream on, on Tuesday nights that I don't miss uh, Mega Man Day, or it may take the form of you know doing a, a replacing a Mega Man Day with a with a flight stream day temporarily. Um, I think ideally I want to keep streaming flights into one day a week at least for now. Um, but um, but basically I want to know what works best for you guys. What do you want to do you want to sit through a four hour stream? Do you want to give up a day of Mega Man? Do you want to sit through a three hour stream and only have hour and a half to hour videos on YouTube? Like, how do you guys want to play? What do you want to see? What content do you want me to, to, to put up? Right? Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that's what I'm going to do. Because end of the day, I have to, I have to do what works for me. Um, and just because it's something that you guys want doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that's healthy for me to do. Uh, like, obviously, it may be that the way you guys like it is just continue as we have been, right? Just stay doing one flight a week, two hours, one flight a week. Uh, but that doesn't work for me. I, I have to be able to utilize my computer to its fullest, right? I want to take advantage of the time while I'm sleep. Um, and I can't do that properly if I'm processing a video during the week and I've only got one to three videos queued up. Um, maybe it's my encoder, I don't know, but it, it, it takes me it takes me between four to eight hours to render one video, even though the video is about an hour and a half to that. Um, and that's after I've already done all the editing. Um, I don't do a lot of editing because it's hard to edit a uh, it's hard to edit a flight sim video without losing the purpose of the flight sim. Right? Skipping, skipping over a lot of crews, right? It, like, this is what flying an airliner is like, and that's that's kind of the point: is to fly as an airliner does. Now, I can probably cut these down and remove some of the nonsense of crews. It's hard for me to determine what I think is junk data that I can remove, 
and what's you know important to keep without some feedback from you guys. But right now, I think I prefer to just keep it as an archive, right? As something where if somebody missed the stream, they can go back and watch that whole stream. Um, I may work on doing a supercut of just takeoffs and just landings. Um, that's actually probably a pretty good idea. Unfortunately, um, that's not something that I've done and not something I'm, it's something I may not be able to do. Uh, we'll see. But, um, because I, uh, to be clear, the reason why I say I may not be able to do it historically is because I don't have a lot of the original video files anymore. Um, unfortunately, I just don't have that much space. Um, I have like five drives. Let me pull that up so I can I, I can tell you guys about it. I'm not gonna show you my file structure. Um, so I've got five drives, one of which is not mine, it's for work. Um, but I've got my Windows drive, which has uh, 26 gigs free, uh, which is not much. It's, it's in the last uh, probably 15%. Uh, same can be said of my storage drive, uh, 178 gigs free, so that's 17%. Um, I've got my drive that's exclusively for Final Fantasy XIV. It is not set up to handle uh, stream like video sizes. Uh, its maximum size is only uh, uh, 120 gigabytes, uh, which means I can only use 111. It's only got 49.4 gigabytes free. And my flight sim drive does have a significant amount of free space, but that is supposed to be up by, uh, by ortho and, and other scenery as I get more of it, right? So I don't want to get into the habit of using that and then having to decide between scenery and original video files. And even if I did, I could only keep maybe two or three months before um, my even my flight sim drive would be completely full. Uh, these, these videos are absolutely enormous. They're about um, 12 to 14 gigabytes per, uh, per stream. So um, I'm not sure how some of these... <clears throat> I'm not sure how YouTubers and such uh, handle all this. I, I don't know. Um, oh, damn it, Rate stream leaders. They deployed another update in the middle of my stream. I just updated before I started the stream. Yes, um, so I would kind of like to put together a super cut of just landings, at the very least. That's something I may have to start doing now. Um, or I may actually have to download my own VODs off of YouTube in order to do it. That would be interesting, right? Have to have to rip my own videos so that I can create content out of them. And unfortunately, they'd be coming from a lossy format. Like, MP4 does have some compression to it, and there's just nothing I can do. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Right? And we'll kind of get a record of, of my landings. Looks like we got about 20 seconds left before we can run our stream readers. We do have uh, at least two people involved, and we've got a significant number of uh, pieces on the board for our usual. All right. 
And here we go, starting the battle. And it looks like we've got some pretty strong allies that are coming and helping us out. Wow, guys, thank you so, so much for helping. Actually, go here. It looks like we've got some decent people playing that, that are pretty strong. So let's go ahead and tank up there and then we'll see where that goes. Alright, so let's take a look where we at. I think we're about 30% of the way through our flight. Okay, so yeah, it's bringing us up. There's Vivod. Alright, so Vivod to Rock, uh, GA413, Medev. Yeah, okay, so I see what they're doing. I 
intercept at intercept the glide slope at FAP. And it's going to be a three degree glide slope, which is normal. And Banford, we're going to come up to the right onto the window. FAP is going to be at uh, DME 5.6. So if we miss, we're going to climb out direct uh, straight. to brief myself a little bit and take a look at what my what my approach is going to look like. I apologize for not being able to show you guys much. That was probably boring. Um, I apologize. Next time I'll, I'll try and find a way before my next stream to show you the charts that I'm looking at. Uh, it's probably not ideal. So anyway, uh, we do have probably thirty-eight minutes, so we'll probably be on the ground in about an hour, which is perfect. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take a five-minute break. Uh, stretch my legs, get some water, that sort of thing. And then I will be right back. You guys hang tight and give me just a minute. Let me put up a timer real quick. And we will be right, right back.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Sorry for that delay. I know I'm a little late coming back, but um, it's not really ideal for me to eat a plum on stream. Um, I didn't want to sit there and just chow down on a big old piece of... I don't know what that is. Is that fruit? I think it's a fruit. I didn't want to sit there and just be forking down this, this big old knot of fruit. Some people don't like to see people eat. And I can get that. I do also have little fruit snacks, but that's something I can just pop in my mouth. But, uh... Yeah. Oh, God damn it, man. Uh, my little things are off again. <laughs> Why is this being such a pain? Sorry about that, folks. Uh, for some reason, that sub thing just doesn't want to center properly. It should, but it doesn't. I don't know why. I have looked into it, and it just doesn't want to. Um, one thing that I don't like about this new setup is it's very particular about some Okay, so we've got our top of the set here in about, is that 110, 118 miles? That shouldn't be too bad. Um, so I think what I am going to do, unless somebody gives me a different route, is I'm going to start doing some shorter flights, but do two flights a week. Um, I'm going to I'm going to increase my Tuesday stream from five to seven to five to eight, and then I'm going to do two one-hour flights. Um, that's going to be my goal. So two one-hour flights on Tuesdays between 5 and 8 p.m. And then I'm going to break that into two videos. Now, um, the way I discuss things, right, as I'm running my stream, I may 
it's going to sound as I'm streaming as though it's a whole other stream, and that's because on YouTube it is. So I'm going to have to reintroduce the video. You guys are going to see me do that reintroducing, reintroducing the video, just like I do at the top of every stream. Normally, I try to keep that one-to-one. -one. That way, I don't have to say anything. I don't have to let you know that, hey, we're going to be doing something weird because we're going to be reintroducing the stream for those that are watching on YouTube. But when I'm going to do two stream, uh, two YouTube videos from one stream, I do have to warn you that something like that is going to happen. This down a bit, a little loud. But yes, if any of you know anybody who might be interested in flight, who knows something about flight that maybe could teach me, or who wants to get into it, let me know. Um, come here, bring him here, point him at the stream. Uh, point them at the YouTube channel to kind of see how the streams go. Again, it's a one-to-one -one thing, right? The the stream and the YouTube videos, one-to-one. -one. The only difference is I do cut out the pre-roll. All the pre-roll is gone up until the point where I start actually doing things. Uh, and I do cut out the portion of the outro where I'm talking to you guys. You do get to see a little bit of what happens off camera afterwards when I do an outro for YouTube uh, because I do cut the stream first and then I record a separate outro for YouTube. Uh, it tends not to ramble quite as much. Um, but that's kind of the, 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 the beast, right? Because Twitch is live where YouTube isn't. And I can sit there and I can re-record everything for YouTube where I can't do that for Twitch so I don't get as rambly but you'll probably hear me record an outro uh, for YouTube as well um, and I'm going to do that for a while probably four or five streams at least so if you are in the Discord and you're suggesting flights to us, keep that in mind we're going to be looking for something a little shorter for a while, we're going to look for you know, 45 minutes to hour flights, as opposed to hour 45 minutes. We're going to be looking for anywhere between 45 minutes and, and, and an hour 15. Uh, that's going to be our sweet spot for a while. I don't mind going a little long um, on our daily flights, so like, normally if we went instead of getting an, uh, an hour 45 flight if we found one that was 215 i'm fine with that right an extra half hour of course on a day like today where we had a 14 minute uh taxi that taxi can have a significant influence all right so we're about 80 miles from top of drop and i'm going to keep watching down here from time to time see when it wants me to input my destination data it should be within 20 miles but it it gets funky i'm not sure what its logic is on when it starts asking for destination data also for those of you wondering not sponsored these are welches and they are delicious welches fruit snacks um they are a, quote, excellent source of vitamins A, C, and E, no preservatives, and are gluten-free. I do appreciate the gluten-free. Um, let's see, vitamin A is 25% daily value. Vitamin C is 25% daily value. Vitamin E is 25% daily value. Um... I'm not sure that I uh, appreciate that as much. <laughs> uh, or the 20 milligrams of sodium for how small these packages are. Uh, but yeah, I get these from Amazon. They're cheap. I think I spent like $7 on a package of 40. Um, they're delicious. They're great for just a little snack if I get hungry. I can just pop one of these, and we're done, you know? Um, 
having them individually wrapped really helps. It keeps them fresher longer. I've had the box that I have there for probably a uh, month and a half. Because I don't eat them all the time. I don't eat a lot of them. It's not like I eat them every day. But uh, they're delicious. I also do do G Fuel. Again, not sponsored. Um, not too long ago, I got one of these uh, starter packs. And you get one of these. Got a little bit left in this one. You get one of these. And you get to sample like five or seven some odd flavors. So far, my favorites are the Galaxy Grape, the Phase Berry, and Fruit Punch. Uh, Kiwi Strawberry was not bad, but it was not what I expected. Um. I don't know what what I was hoping for it to be, but it, it didn't have much flavor. It felt more like a water, right? That that it felt like a fruit water, not like a uh, fruit flavored drink. Um, I've also been using again, not sponsored, uh, a service called Verb, and they have these little energy bars. They're just teeny tiny little things. And they're about 90 calories. It's uh, they're they're very lightweight, but they're caffeinated. Um, the ones I've been doing are salted peanut butter. Um, next time I think I'm gonna do a maple blueberry. Um, but basically they just contact they just text you once every couple of weeks and say hey do you want anything and I'm like yeah, give me something. Uh, also give me a, a little sampler so I can share some with my family um, and try new flavors uh, it's not terribly cheap but it's not expensive either and it's something nice for me to just grab in the middle of the day like not during lunch but you know that that three o'clock or so I, I hit a crash where I start losing steam it's really bad for streams right because Around 3 o'clock, I start hitting this crash, and I want to sleep and take a nap. Like, even if it's just an hour nap, I want to take a nap. But then if I nap for an hour, right, I'm going to feel lousy for the next hour. And that means that up until the moment stream starts, I'm going to feel kind of lousy. And I, I have to get my studio set up. I mean, I know I'm gesturing back here. You can't see anything, but I promise there's a, there, there's a green screen here that you can't see. Um, I have to get all that set up. I have to get my microphone and boom arm set up properly. My windscreen uh, pop filter. I have to get my flight stick and throttle set up. I have to get my uh, rudder pedals set up. Um, you know, I have to get Snaz and Snip and uh, Spotify, Stream Raiders, uh, Streamlabs Chat Bot, OBS Studio. The game, um, Sim Toolkit Pro. I have to get all these online. I have to make my flight plan and export it. Uh, like, there's a lot of things you guys don't see behind the scenes. One of these days, what I should do is get started early and actually record my setup process and let you guys see how much of this stuff. Uh, Cause I'm not lying when I say it takes me a good hour or so to get set up. Um, especially for flight streams. It's a little shorter for, um, it's a little shorter for Mega Man. Um, that's a little easier because I don't have to worry about the flight stick and the, the rudder pedals. I don't have to worry about the flight plan. Um, in this case, I'm just using the same flight plan that I used, uh, last time I streamed, which was, um, uh, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, but last time, when we flew this, uh, we crashed. Alright, so I need to enter destination data. Let me get Sim Toolkit Pro open here. Uh, so let's look at our weather for ENVA for Tron time. Okay, first thing I want to try and do is pull wind which I cannot. 
So let's get to performance data. The Q&H is going to be 1023. Temperature is 0, minus 4 with wind chill. Wind is going to be 210 at 7. Arrival charts, bedroom obstacle chart, okay, I'm not really seeing obstacles, what's my moral? Four thousand before bamboo approach south runways. Jesus. Okay, so is there a Say four forty. Let's try again to pull our wind, and then we will run that. Uh, minute. Ah, you tried to sneak that in on me. Fuck you very much, senor. Okay, so let's switch this back to progress. This down. Alright, so let's bring it down. I think we need to go down to 6,000 feet. Let me look at my approach here. VOD is going to be at flight level 100. And then we're going to go down to 6,000 or 7,000. Seven thousand because our minimum is going to be 6,000 until bed B. Landing elevation is set to auto. Uh, MCTU arrivals is completed. Performance approach is completed. Um, top of descent winds has been pulled. Altitude has been set and pushed. Speed brake half is required. We don't need it. We're doing fine. Um, we'll need to set Q&H at 7,000 feet. Any lights will come on at 10,000. ND data, we can turn on our constraints and our airports. Landing system will come on when we need it, and the RADNAV will be import important eventually. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. Raiders. Oh, 
good. Looks like we got a nice, decent group going on. I do recognize at least one name. Got someone that's got a real long. Oh, it's the the uh, tower itself is doing the shooting. We, gotta, we don't have a lot of people dying, so we should be all right. And we're down to only one more hour. Oh no. I'm worried. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm worried. We'll be fine. There we go. Victory! And that's a silver chest. Nice. Soot, you looks like you got a monk, uh, a monk scroll. Nice. Okay, we probably got another half hour in us, so... Real quick, I'm gonna upgrade my tank, upgrade my rogue, and then we're gonna go back to the campaign. Scroll in. Ooh, four skulls. Well, let's do our best, guys. We've attracted a few viewers. So I'm gonna put this uh, pumpkin mage in. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's up to you guys to win it. Alright, so we are on the descent to Vivod. You'll be at 7,000 at Raka and 6,000 below that. We won't change again until Bamboo, I think, at 4,000. I'm going to go ahead and take us all the way down to 7,000. So we do have Vivod on the scope now. I say that, what I mean is END. I shouldn't use bad terminology like that. I'll get used to it. I'll say things that I shouldn't when I shouldn't. Because it would be nice at some point to get my PPL. I would love to fly commercially, but that's never going to happen. <laughs> at no point am I going... I'm far too old. I'm far too old to get my, you know, multi-engine jet and commercial license and actually get anywhere with a career in flight. But it would be fun. Um, I know it's a lot of work. And a lot of rough hours. But you know what? I, I enjoy that. Like, this is the sort of thing I could do. I, I would love it. You know, just controlling this massive thing. And, and... Never too old to change career. Well, it's not just about being too old to change career, right? Um... Like, uh, I don't want to say exactly how old I am, but I am in my mid-30s, right? And it would take me probably, I want to say, at least two years to get, and, and lots of money. Let's be clear, also lots of money. Um, it'd probably take me a year to get my PPL, and then, and that, and that's assuming that everything gets back to normal. 
And then um, it's probably another year or two to get multi-engine jet. Um, maybe even a year after that to get commercially licensed. Then I have to get a job with a airline. And uh, at that point, I would be a cadet for God knows how long. Um, and then a first officer. And, like, all your hours and everything is based on your, um, your time with the company. So it's not ideal. What is this? We're 10 under. We're fine. Uh, so we're bang on our descent. I, I can see it right here. You see this little dot? That's what tells me where my descent profile is. And we are bang on it. Um, so we're taking the RNAV approach, which is, it basically means random navigation. Um, it means that we are essentially navigating off a of GPS. We're not actually tracking the VORs themselves. At least that's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. Okay, so what does it say our ETA, ETE is now? Okay, so it's saying seven minutes. I think it's going to be a little longer than that. We're probably looking closer to 20. Because um, that's assuming we don't slow down. Which we're definitely going to. Our ground speed will be going down. Right now it's 381. Uh, I think that might even be on my overlay. Let me see. No, it is not. Um, I was. That's right. I was working on how, how to fit that on the overlay somewhere. Um, I may just have to shrink down my... Um, panels for follow subs, donations, and cheers so that I can include some data about the flight. But, uh, so that's, that's kind of the idea is, is I want to fit that somewhere on the stream. I used to have it, but I don't anymore. But yeah, um, basically it's all that time, even once you join the airline itself, you have to do a lot of work to actually be in command of a commercial airliner. Um, and that's not easy. It, it, takes, it takes many, many years to get anywhere worth being. Um, and you kind of have to choose your type rating and all that beforehand, so I have to know what it, what is it that I want to fly. Do I want to fly a 737? Do I want to... I mean, even let's look broader. Do I want to fly an Airbus or a Boeing? If I want to fly Airbus, I can fly in the United States, but it's much rarer to find some uh, uh, an airline that's running Airbuses in their fleet. Um... If I want to fly Boeing, I can fly here in the States. Not going to see quite as many jobs abroad. Um, but Boeings are... I would call them more complex to fly. Um, why are you blinking standard? No, we're fine. We're fine. You, sh you shut up. You stop. Transition altitude is 7,000 feet. We're fine. So, Boeing just does what you tell it to do. Airbus is a little different. Um, Airbus, you tell it what to do, and it decides best how to do it. Uh, it's, a, it's what's called fly-by-wire. Turn on auto brakes. Actually, I'm gonna put auto brakes low. This is what is. What is I gotta see. Um, not 
stock. Of course, you don't tell me the runway length. Um, two seven runway two seven two seven. Even runway zero nine. Runway zero nine. Dimensions 9,000 feet. Yeah, I can use, I can use low. And that means less heat. Go ahead and go down to 6,000. Private charts again. And arrival Four degrees to me. All right, let's turn on our landing lights. Seat belts can come on. It's 1023. For our Q and H. We're going to start decelerating because under 10,000 feet we need to be under, 10, uh, under 250 knots. Actually, at net, if we need to be under 220. And that's why we're still staying high, which we shouldn't be. By bed V, we need to be at max 220. I don't know why it decided to put it at native, but that's fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put out flaps one because we're under 230 knots. But I don't want it to slow me down more yet. are on, ending data is constraints. Let's go ahead and turn on our landing system. Speed is managed. Speed brake is not necessary. Flaps 1 is at 230 knots, which we've done. Uh, when the ILS is tuned, we can go to approach mode, but we are nowhere near that yet. Um... So we should be good for now. We're just kind of going to follow this RNAV approach.
We are at 6,000. That's our actual restriction here. Okay, so we're going to intercept at FAP at 4,100 feet. From Sony. Do you even have Sony? I don't have Sony. And I don't have FAP. Okay, well. On that last turn. I'm gonna switch this, and we're gonna go down to 4100. Earliest available. Flap extension for two is going to be 215 knots. Like trolls. Flaps one and slats. We're not looking at Fap, we're looking at Lambo. Now I do like what I do like about this is it is not determining that as soon as I hit flaps one, it wants me to go down to the speed for flaps two. I do appreciate that a lot. That's something it used to do and it drove me crazy. Okay, this looks more like what I'm actually doing. Initial approach fix is going to be MBEP. Final approach fix is going to be at BA 5 fourth. Okay, ILS is tuned. So, approach one is activated, autopilot one and two is on, uh, we're about to intercept the glide slope, we're not far off it, but we're descending a little too fast, that's fine, we'll ca it'll catch up to us. And then we'll slow down. As long as you're in approach mode, it'll set flap speeds automatically. Good. Which it, it didn't used to, which is what I was trying to get at. So in the in the toll list, what it used to do is as soon as I deployed flaps one, which I sometimes had to do for an approach like this, where I've got a low speed uh, restriction long before I get actually onto the approach. Uh, so right now I'm limited to 220 knots. Um, but I'm I wasn't I wasn't close enough to have to worry about my flaps. 
I, I was not ready to go to Flaps 2. But what it used to do is it would drop my speed. As soon as I hit Flaps 1, it would try to uh, go all the way down to Flaps 2 speed. And once I hit Flaps 2 speed, it would start reducing to Flap 3, from 3 to Flap full, and from full to my reference speed. Right? Um, which was not ideal. See, like, now is a good time for me to want to uh, start f start worrying about flaps. I wasn't there yet before. Alright, so we are captured on the glide slope. We should have been captured on the glide slope. <laughs> it's getting us a little low. are getting lower than I like. Plane, what are you doing? He's doing something weird here at Lambo. But yeah, this is one of the things I like about... Um, Airbus is that it does a lot of things on its own. It does a lot of things automatically. But you do still have to watch it. Okay, so we should be lining up, uh, getting captured on the localizer. And we turned through the localizer a little bit. Go ahead and drop our gear. Speed checked, flaps two. Go ahead and arm our ground spoilers. Auto brake is set low. Speed check, flaps three. Ecam all green. Speed check, flaps full. Alright. We're a little low on the glide path. 2000. You can always pull for speed and select it many. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, and I and I would frequently do that before. Uh, as I'm getting better with... Um, as I'm getting better with my actual... Flight experience, I'm doing stuff like that more often. I'm going to take this over. I need to get stable. I don't want this thing to go unstable. And it was getting real close to getting past one dot. we go. Now mind One you, I'm five. not real good at this. Minimum. 
100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10. Five. The reversers. The reversers. Forty knots, manual braking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tron time. That was not a bad landing at all for me. Now I'm not sure which way we need to go here. I'm going to take a left. I actually don't have my charts up for that. Uh, no, it looks like I'm going to go right. Because it's only indicating exit that way. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit that chrono button. Retract our flaps. break off I didn't finish turning on my lights oops all right so on rollout engine mode is normal flaps are retracted APU master can come on Switch this to twenty seven knots is a little fast. Slow it down a bit. All right, and flap open, APU start. Right, brake fans. We're fine. So it down a little bit and let's actually turn in right here. Now, I'm probably going to bump my plane on this thing, because uh, I don't think this is what is supposed to go here. Well, apparently I've got markings for a 319. Down. I think that should be good since I don't have a marshaller. I'm actually going to pop out and look here. Um, that is not good. I'm going to let it roll just a little more. I didn't say that hard. There we go. All right, now let's go through our parking checklist. Park brake pressure is green. Uh, park brakes on. <clears throat> Anti-ice is already off. APU bleed can come on. Engine 1 and 2 master can come off. Runway turnoff lights are off. Wing lights can come off. Nav and logo lights can come off. Um, 
nose wheel lights can come off. Uh, beacon light is off. Strobe light can come off because that's all going to be shut down by now. Uh, seat belts off. Uh, elapse time stop. Fuel pumps can all come off. Uh, transponder to standby. Where was that? <laughs> Mcdo's dim brake fans can come on. Technically, we're at 300, so we don't really need it, and we're shutting down anyway. Let's go ahead and do the securing the aircraft. We need to turn off the adhers. Uh, exterior lights all off. Interior lights can all come off. APU master off. APU bleed off. Um, no smoking lights are off. Batteries off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tron time. This time, no problems. Uh, when we tried to do this in Microsoft Flight Simulator, obviously bad things happened and we crashed. Um, and that was through no fault of my own, as you can tell, I did just fine this time. Um, but yeah, welcome to Tron time. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have hit the, uh, follow button down below. Um, I do this every Tuesday. I do oscillate back and forth between, um, between X-Plane and Microsoft Flight. We're going to finish out this round of Stream Raiders. And then I will let you guys go. And we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to be playing uh, Mega Man X. I think we're doing X6 now. Um, so hopefully that'll be fun. We'll get back into that. I haven't played it in like a month. Uh, because of injuries and illnesses but we're back now and hopefully everybody's going to have a good time victory hell yeah and that's a gold chest ladies and gentlemen looks like somebody's gonna get 50 coins somebody's gonna get a monk and uh, two monks and that was soot got 50 gold and alan kazam got the two monks fantastic guys thank you so much for being here and for those of you on YouTube, thank you so much for spending some time watching this stream. Uh, I hope you appreciated it and that it was fun for you. It is a little bit different than the one we posted last week where we crashed on the way here because of Microsoft flight reasons. Again, as I said earlier in the video, pretty sure I figured out why. I did help save another streamer from making the same mistakes. Um... Unfortunately, I just don't have a non-normal checklist in front of me to go through. Uh, and I obviously do not know the memory items. So when you get to something like this where something has gone very wrong, I don't have a checklist to follow. I just have to quickly think and try and figure out what's going on. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for spending your time. I know it's precious and i hope you've enjoyed it i will see you guys next week hopefully you will also be here on monday for mega mondays uh i will see you next time thank you so much and have a wonderful night